Rick Mercer, everybody. Welcome, Mary. How are you? Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. The, uh, as is evidenced by your show, mm -hmm. Budget Day means something to you? Oh, no, Budget Day is big, eh? Yeah. The speech from the throne, Budget Day. We actually, I look forward to these things. Although, I'm glad I'm not in Ottawa, because you don't want to be stuck in a lockup. No. That's terrible. <laughs> you You're so? stuck in a room without a phone, just a pencil and a budget, and you actually have to read it. I wouldn't want to do that. I think that. it's like six hours, too. Oh, yeah, the I can't imagine. Is a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, and what a great time to be, to be talking about Canadian politics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, after 80 odd days off, you come back with a throne speech, a budget day, the prorogation, Afghan detainee controversy. Sadly, it is a gold mine. It is. It is. Well, you know, that's obviously what I mine. And it was, uh, you know, the throne speech was, well, God, it was longer than Avatar. It went. <laughs> <laughs> it went uh, glasses would have helped, really. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, and, uh, and I don't know why it was so long because, uh, you know, there's nothing in it. This is the thing about that throne speech. There's like nothing in it. And then, what, uh, obviously, what happened was they sat down and they realized we have nothing. You know, <laughs> what are we going to do? You're like, we, we said we were going away to recalibrate. We have nothing. So then they came up with all these ridiculous notions like, we'll change the lyrics to O Canada. And, yeah. and the only reason they do that is, of course, so people can get upset and talk about it the next day on talk radio and they can actually think that the government's doing something. And then, oh, we're bringing in Seniors Day. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, senior citizens in this country, there's serious issues that affect them. And, you know, one day of the year, people saying, congratulations, you're old, is not... <laughs> That's not going to solve any problems. But it's to what you said. It's a diversion. Oh, it's a total diversionary tactic. And, it, you know, because it's the type of thing that's going to get people upset. And then the Prime Minister's office said today, oh, we have no opinion on it. Well, well why, why are you doing it? You're talking, <laughs> and, you know, we just went through singing Oh Canada over and over and over again until we were blue in the face, you know, through the wonderful Olympics. And then now we're going to change that. That didn't work out that well sure. at all. <laughs> See, I actually, in theory, I, I actually have no problem with them changing the lyrics of O Canada to be more inclusive. Like, I'm fine with I it. I don't either, yeah. George, but if you pull on that thread, my friend, it will all collapse. The, <laughs> because well, the, the God Keep Our Land's got to go. Oh, and then, yeah, of course, some people will be upset about that, and other people will say, stand on guard. Why are we standing on guard? That's too much. We should be lying <laughs> down or something. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's some, you know, oh, you know, once you, I mean, it, it is what it is, I think, yeah. and then once you uh, start pulling on the thread, the whole thing could unravel. You, you actually mentioned the Olympics, and I know that you've ranted about amateur funding, uh, funding for amateur for athletics yeah. in this country. Are you, after the Olympics, do you feel confident this will continue? I, I feel pretty confident. Now, of course, the problem is there's always these big downtimes uh, in between Olympics, which, of course, is the, the nature of the beast. But, you know, I've interviewed so many of these amateur athletes uh, on the show, and uh, both Olympic and Paralympic athletes. And, the, you know, what people don't understand is, I mean, these people are top athletes, are, are A-carded athletes, are essentially living in poverty. I mean, they're all living in their mother's basements. If, they're, if they have to be, you know, in Canmore, they have to be living in Calgary, away from home, where there are centers for excellence are, they're like jammed into basement apartments with four other guys. They're like, they're living in poverty. They don't have any money. And, and there's this perception that if you win gold, it will parlay into big money. And mm -hmm. I know gold medal athletes, and it doesn't necessarily parlay into big money and endorsement deals and everything else. I saw, in, in Vancouver, man, I saw some athletes carrying their medals around. That helped them get into events. Oh, yeah, of course. That's how yeah. crazy it is. Like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. You but also, but people, you know, the, the athletes, the amateur athletes are so generous, and they know that people love to touch those oh. things. And they all, like every one of them, I've seen them, like if they were here, they just pass it out, and yep. it goes around the room. And, you, and when you're there, you're kind of like you're interviewing the athlete, and it's like you're going, where's the medal? Where's the medal? Yep. And they're all very generous with the medals I, and let I, people touch I, them. I was in a bar one night, and uh, after the, the, the women's um, Olympic uh, gold medal team, the hockey team mm -hmm. were there, a couple of them, uh, and they had their medals. And it was actually, like in a sense, the Stanley Cup had entered the oh, room. Oh, yeah. People, people love them. And it's it goes, exciting. It goes for especially to Canadians. There's something about us feeling like we're, we're, we're this country feels like the world's largest small town, mm -hmm. in a sense. And there's a yeah. sense of community. I guess you get that all the time when you travel across the country. Oh, you know, I, I mean, I've told you this before. I think I have the best job in the country. And uh, and every week I get to go somewhere where I've never been, usually. And, uh, you know, this a couple of weeks ago I went to Roslyn, British Columbia, and they have a, a winter festival there that, uh, that, you know, predates the Quebec Winter Carnival. This is like a very old thing. And what they do is they have, the, they bobsled on homemade bobsleds the, the town is in the side of a mountain, and on homemade bobsleds through their downtown. Oh, that's safe. Yeah. <laughs> they ice down their street, and then they just boom. And so I'm on this bobsled, you know, like we're whipping through stop signs and stuff. But I was interviewing guys who were on bobsleds that were, that the bobsled was built by their father in the 40s who was deceased, and they still raced their father's bobsled. <laughs> and, and the guy's like, every year I think it's going to fall apart because it's getting rickety. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great gig, and it's certainly, you know, the great part is getting to go to all those different places. Yeah, you must be, have you ever been terrified doing something like that? All the time. <laughs> all the time. This past week, I, you know, I went out with, with the Toronto uh, Police Force here, the Marine Rescue Unit, uh, here in the, right here yeah. in Toronto, and so we went out on the ice on the other side of Toronto Island. And so there's open water off in the distance, but you're on solid ice. And I had to walk towards the edge until I fell through the ice. And they were like, go further, keep going. We'll rescue you. And it was like, and then, you know, I had to do it three times, because oh, of course Jesus. then Don Spence, my cameraman, said, can we do it again from another angle? <laughs> and and uh, I, was, I never had that recurring nightmare of falling through ice before, and now, you know, uh, all last night, every, uh, I kept wake oh my God, I'm through the ice again. That's amazing. That's so there's always something terrifying. Host in peril, we call it. That's what you are all the time. Yeah, they like to see the host in peril. That's incredible. You, I want to talk to you about, because last time Norman Jewison was on the show, he mentioned that you were going to work on a film with him. But before I get to I wanted to, one more thing with the politics was the proroguing. Uh, when, as soon as the government prorogued the parliament, right. again, um, one of my first thoughts after what the the other thought was, oh, Rick Mercer's going to have a field day with this. Yeah, you know, I all, I'm, you know, I'm an armchair kind of politician guy, and you know, and I like to sit around and think strategy, political strategy, and no more than you know, lots of people do with sports, and and occasionally, especially Stephen Harper, he has this huge capacity to do something where you sit back and go. Wow, what an incredibly stupid move. This is going to backfire. And clearly they're doing it because they think in this situation, Canadians aren't going to care. This right. was what they felt. And it was a giant miscalculation, and, and, uh, and, and it was exciting for that very reason. I mean, it was good in lots of reasons, actually. There's silver linings. I mean, Canadians learned a new word. You know, prorogue. That was good. And uh, we learned what it was about and how it happens all the time. But then most people came to the conclusion that this was kind of a ridiculous uh, way to use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, But more than that, you know, Canadians became engaged, oddly enough, in, in the debate. They became fairly well informed in the debate. And then a lot of Canadians went out and marched on Parliament. And I always like to see that, no matter who's in power. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, it, it's, you know, involving the, the citizenship. So I think that's a good thing. Tell me about um, uh, the Norman Jewison thing. You're working with Jewison on a film? I know. Is that like that? I, he sent me a note one day. Said, "I'd like, you know, would, would you like to write this film?" And it's a remake of his, of his classic, "The Russians Are Coming." Essentially, yeah. myself and Ed Rich, as a Newfoundland writer, are, uh, are have written the script. And uh, you know, you just, you know, I, I would just go like, if he'd called and said, "Will you wash my car?" I would have said, "Yes, I'm there." Yeah. It's Norman Jewison, so uh, it's been a great experience. Working with him has been great. You go up in his office, and he has this, you know, this incredible pad with like shag carpeting and all this fabulous, you know, mementos and yeah. pictures of him with presidents and all these brilliant movies that he's directed over the years. And you know, it's uh, it's a really incredible to work with him. It's such a body of knowledge, as you can imagine. Yeah, for sure. And when you walk into a place um, like that, you, you can't help but take a picture. Oh, I actually. I almost, I, because of Norman Jewison, I almost accidentally sent my mother a picture of my junk. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know how... You know how <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, you know how you, know, you see these certain stories in the, in the news and then people say, like, well, what in God's name were they taking those pictures for? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, so I was in Jewison's office, right? right? And I'm always on my Blackberry, right? And I got it there, whatever. And Jewison's of a different generation. He's a, and maybe more polite than I am. So very quickly, he's like, what are you doing on your Blackberry all the time? We're here to work, right? Yeah. So I put the Blackberry away. And so I wanted to check my messages. So uh, I took my Blackberry to the bathroom when I went for a leak. And so... I'm going for a leak in the bathroom, and I'm standing over the toilet, and over the toilet, there's a picture of Norman Jewison directing a young Steve McQueen in The Cincinnati Kid, right? Yeah. right? And it's this fabulous picture, and Steve McQueen, it's raining, and it's Jewison and, and Steve McQueen, and my mother always loved Steve McQueen, you know? And I thought, wow, I'm gonna take a picture of this. And so my mother, I say, hey, Mom, look, I'm working with Norman Jewison, he directed The Cincinnati Kid. So I take a picture of it, yeah. right? Hey. You know, and then I'm going back out to the office, and I'm about to send it, you know, click, send it to mom. And then Jewison says, oh, you're on your Blackberry again. And so I just put it away. Yeah. Then I get home, and I kind of forget about it. And I went, oh, i got to send that picture to mom. And then I went, oh, I should look at it first and see how it turned out. And I looked at it, and there was glass on the picture of... <laughs> Jewison and the Cincinnati kid. So, so there's Steve McQueen, and there's Jewison, and then there's my junk. <laughs> You know, but I want to I want to do this best worst thing. Uh, okay. You're quick on your feet. I'm gonna throw some stuff. But before we go there, uh, you've in the past said that 
Jason Kenney was like the gift that keeps on giving. And yes. from, the, from my point of from view, point of view right, but remember yes. what's good for me and what's good for the country are two completely right. different things. Well, Santa has arrived again. Yes. Well, you know, Jason Kenney, again this week, of course, he's a, you know, there's this new citizenship guide. You know, that new citizens, of course, yeah. they, have to, they have to study and, uh, and take the test, want to become Canadian citizens. And, uh, you know, it's 69 pages. It's a fairly substantial guide. And, of course, there's a section on human rights. And uh, when the guide came out, uh, you know, most people were happy, but uh, gay rights activists said, well, you know what, there's this section on, uh, on you know, human rights in Canada, and it doesn't mention that homosexuality was, you know, uh, made legal, was uh, decriminalized in the late 60s or 71 or whatever it was I'd probably fail the test and uh, and uh, but also that you know it's it's legal to get uh, same-sex marriages legal in Canada and Kenny went oh my goodness what a terrible oversight you know oh that's awful I can't believe that happened and now Canada press has found out that in fact it was constantly there and every time he had it he kept marking it out with the pen because he didn't want it in the guide because he was a big activist against same-sex marriage and so you know these type of things are but you know a guy like that he's running for Stephen Harper's job this is what's happening now there's certain conservatives that are gunning for Harper's job because they know there will be an election eventually and uh, and if there's a reduced minority Harper's probably gone even if there's an increased minority he could be gone plus he's after doing five years so he could go for lots of different reasons and uh, so they're all gunning for the job and and uh, so Jason Kenney is you know he's eking out his territory by being a hard social conservative and uh, Prime Minister Kenney Prime Minister Kenney <laughs> anyway, let's move on, shall we? Um, best Prime Minister ever. Oh, see, you know, George, you asked me these questions, and, you know, we might as well go for a drink for three hours. Let's do it. What, best Prime Minister ever. A topper. <laughs> sure. And I'll tell you why. No. All right, how about this? Coolest thing you learned about Stephen Harper when you spent the night with him? Oh, his charm, his wit, his, his love of the arts. He plays piano, you know. Yes, he does. Yes. That's just the yes. only good no, thing. The, the, probably the surprising thing is the wig. <laughs> What was your favorite moment uh, of the Olympics? Oh, you know, wow, wow, that's a tough one. There's so many. I think Bilodeau winning the first gold, oh, no. just because, you know, we weren't that familiar with him, and then when we met him, and he was such an amazing guy, and such an amazing Canadian, and, and his brother was there, and, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and then really, I just started crying, and I didn't stop for so long, so there's so many great moments. Nice. Yeah. Now, when people ask me what's coming up next on the hour, I generally blank. Uh, do you know what's coming up next on the Mercer Report? Uh, yes, I'm, well, I mentioned that I'm getting dunked in the yeah. ice, um, you know, and I survive. So that's <laughs> good. Mercer Report, Tuesday, CBC, 8 p.m., uh, that's 8.30 in Newfoundland and at Labrador. Rick Mercer, everybody. Thank you.